Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. And today we have five questions sent in by real estate investors. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at michaelquarles.com and I'll get it asked and answered. Also, just a note before we start the gold coaching program that we have, the one that has 50 classes a month or so, accountability coach, CRM, call center, all that kind of stuff attached. That is going to be going up in price. So if you're interested in the program, jump on in just as soon as possible and we'll get you training and learning how to be a real estate investor for profit. So here we go. Let me grab these questions. Question number one, what is the difference between hoteling and flipping? I hear you say a lot that you take title and then sell. Is that part of hoteling? I would imagine that as soon as you take title and do any improvements, i.e. put money in the property, that it then becomes flipping. Is that correct? Well, let's go over the five basic types of real estate investing. There is a signing. So that means you're going to sign a contract with the seller at a reduced value off of a future value. So most of the time, assigners, they look at ARV times 70% minus repairs. They then sell that personal property. It's not the real property. Real property is real estate. They sell personal property, the piece of paper that the contract is written on, to another investor who's going to then take it, pop, most likely rehab it, fix it, and then ultimately sell it for ARV after repair value or keep it as a passive income, but most likely they're going to flip. The contract that they sell is going to be for a portion of the profit that could be arrived at. So let's assume for a second that the end investor that's going to fix it and flip it is going to make 50 grand. It's not unheard of for the investor in a scenario like that to make $5,000. They get paid that $5,000 at the close of the purchase. Now, in some states, you're very much limited on the number of transactions you can assign in a year. And you'll want to confirm with your state what those guidelines are. We're never owning the property. The guidelines are set in place so that folks don't act as real estate professionals without a license. So if there's a licensee attached to an assignment contract, perfectly fine. But most investors who are assigners are not licensees. The second type, wholesaling. So a lot of folks get assigning and wholesaling mixed up. Wholesaling is going to take the same formula of the ARV times 70% minus repairs. They're going to go ahead and buy the property, close escrow or close the closing if you're in a closing state. And then they're going to sell that property to another investor for less than it's worth, i.e. the phrase or word wholesale. Now, this is perfectly legal. You can do this as many times as you want. You buy a house, sell it all you want. Thank goodness we, we don't have rules that say we can't buy and sell property. Hoteling is buying a property at a reduced value. It's a different formula. Now, I like the formula that I like anyway is I, I never want to base anything off of ARV. I want to go down to as is value and look at that number. So what I do is I end up going, what's the ARV? What are the repairs? So I'm going to take two times the repairs unless the repairs are over 10,000. And then I'm going to take the repair value and then however many months it takes me times 10,000. So let's assume for a second, I have a house that needs $15,000 in work and I can repair that in that house and bring it up to modern standards in, in a month, less than a month. So I'm going to go 15,000 repair costs plus 10,000. That's 25,000. I'm going to subtract that from my ARV to get my as is. Same scenario though. Let's assume for a second, I need 15,000 in work, but it's going to take me between one and two months. Well, then I'm going to take the two months times 10,000, which is 20. I'm going to add the 15 to the 20, which is 35. 
and I'm going to subtract 35 from the ARV to get my as is. When I come to the value of the as is, I'm going to multiply that number typically by 65%. So if it's under 10,000, I'm going to do two times repairs minus ARV times 65%. If it's more than 10,000, I'm going to go repairs plus months times 10,000 minus ARV times 65%. Now the beauty, and then I'm gonna put this property on the market instantly. I have the right to sell the property the moment I have it under contract. We're wholesaling and, whole, and assigning, the multiple listing service doesn't really work for those folks it's be, it, because you're gonna pay a listing agent 6% and sell, you know, the listing selling sites, 6%. And sometimes they're only making like 10%. So there's just not enough room to get a real estate agent involved. Well, in wholesaling, I'm going to instantly put it on the MLS. So I want a real estate agent involved because remember, I'm buying it at 65% of as is value. So I'm buying it 35% off. It's only going to cost me 6% to sell. So I'm making roughly 29%. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to sell it. And I'm going to start selling it and offering it for sale the day I have it under contract. And then there's some terms and we'll teach you all this kind of stuff in the coaching program on how to do all this. But instead of making just 10% of the profit, I'm gonna make all the profit except for the, the small fee to the real estate agent. So let's assume for a second I have a $100,000 house. The wholesaler or the assigner, they put it under contract for 70 grand. And they're gonna either assign that contract or wholesale that house. So they're gonna make somewhere around $3,000 profit, 10% of the 30 that's left over. Let's take my wholesaling scenario. It's worth 100, I'm buying it for 65. That leaves me with 35,000 left. The 100 I'm gonna pay 6% commissions to, so now I'm gonna be left with 29,000. So one way an investor makes 3,000 and one way an investor makes 29,000. And I can tell everybody that the heart, the work is in getting it under contract, learning how to market, learning how, you know, what areas of town to market to that are gonna be most successful for you learning the negotiation skills it takes to get someone to sell you a house at 65 cents on the dollar, learning all of the, the walkthroughs and the repair cost estimates and all that kind of good stuff. But once we get under contract, a lot of the work, the hard work, the heavy lifting is done. And I sure wish people would learn how to do the rest of the work because I tell you what, you're just throwing a lot of money away. So that's the third one. The fourth one is fix and flipping. So now Going to go back to this scenario, I'm, a wholesale, I'm going to get the house under contract just like a wholesaler would or an assigner would. And I'm going to do whatever it needs to be done to it to modernize it, to bring it up to current standards, and then I'm go, which is the fixing part. And then I'm going to flip it later. The disadvantage here is all four are okay. I'm just saying the disadvantage. Here is that we can't start marketing it until we're done with the rehab. And then we know we have days on market as an average. And so now it's going to take us, let's assume for a second, it takes us 45 days to rehab it. So I'm at Home Depot and I'm at Lowe's and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I've got all my money out at risk and it's been 45 days and now I can put a for sale sign in the front yard. I'm going to use a real estate professional most likely. But that cost and all that exposure is expensive for what little bit of gain you get on the backside by increasing the value because of the repairs. So, and so that's why I like wholesaling over fix and flipping because I, I just don't like going to Home Depot. Used to go to Home Depot every day. People could ask me, you know, where's this and where's that? And I could tell them. Got a general building contractor's license. I've built 70 or so houses. I've, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rehabs. So I understand the rehab part of it. And that's a big portion of what we teach. But I just like wholesaling because I don't like to have, I don't want to get my hands dirty anymore. Then the fifth way is the, the passive income, the buy and hold. So those five ways, assigning, wholesaling, wholesaling, fix and flip, passive income. So wholesaling is similar to wholesaling and similar to fix and flipping, except unlike fix and flipping, we're not fixing anything and we're making maximum gain. And unlike wholesaling, we're not selling it at a reduced value. And we're allowing the real estate agent buyer pool out there sell our house for us because buyers think real estate agents are free. Let's face it. Everybody thinks real estate agents don't cost them anything. You know, they put them in their car and they're driving around, show them houses all day long. They don't realize that commission is part of the sales price. So, and I, and I know it is. So I just want to use them to sell my houses. 
So that's the characteristics of it in those four terms. So great question. Question number two, if the house doesn't meet FHA VA minimums, would it be worth putting some money into it to get it up to the minimum and open up the buyer pool to owner occupants? I have the time and money to hire it out, but obviously want to do as little work as possible. Main issue is masonite siding that needs repaired, replaced on some houses. Well, again, you know, one of the characteristics about fixing and flipping, because, you know, it typically takes you some time, you know, to buy it, then rehab it and, you know, all that kind of good stuff and then offer it for sale. You typically own the property for more than the 90 day seasoning period for FHA. So fix and flipping, you really don't have a seasoning issue. Yeah, sometimes you can sell something faster than 90 days, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb that if you're going to fix and flip something, you're going to own it for 90 days. Hoteling, our buyer is another real estate investor. Now, keep in mind, those of us that are listening to this podcast, I want you to know right now, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to let you in on a secret. You're not normal. When it comes to normal and the real estate investor type, the typical real estate investor, 75% of them, when we run the numbers all the time, because we always want to know what our market's doing, 75% of them pay full value using a real estate professional. Only 25% of us deal with sellers directly. So I know I have a lot more investors out there that are paying cash for properties. I don't have to worry about FHA or VA minimums because I'm selling it to a cash investor via the MLS. And here's a little secret on the selling part. If you hire REO agents to sell your houses, those REO agents, real estate offering agents, selling foreclosures for banks, they have a pretty good buyer pool of cash buyers because that's how you buy REOs. Most REOs can't be financed because of the work requirements, and so they have to be bought with cash, and most of our buyers buy with cash. So you really don't have the issue of can you sell it because you're buying it correctly. Remember, you're buying it at 65% of value as is value, not ARV, as is. It's an important distinction. And you're going to sell it for 100% of as is. You're going to let somebody else buy it. Let's assume for a second, the repairs are $20,000. It's going to take you two months. When that all happens, it's going to be worth $200,000. $20,000 repairs, two months. That's $40,000 off of two hundred. dollars The as is is one sixty. At 65% of one sixty, you can see that you're going to be buying it for closer around the 100000 mark. But someone who buys it from you for the 160, they're going to make 20 grand by fixing it up. And so you always figure these costs. You make some money. It's how, how it's working. So it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to increase wealth fast and not give all your money away on a signing and wholesaling. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. Question number three. Do HUD properties count in the comps to determine listing price? The property is livable as is, just needs updating and new carpet. Absolutely. When you're looking at what's on the market for sale, you absolutely have to look at what's on the market for sale because a dollar going to your house or a dollar going to a bank-owned property house is the same dollar. And that's one of the powers of knowing this information, in which is we chart it, we track it every month. It's important to track. But knowing what the REO is, REO industry is doing in your marketplace is extremely important so you can communicate that negotiation with the seller when you put your property under contract. But yeah, because it's the same buyer. Keep in mind, it's just, we're talking about the same buyer. Same guy that buys the REO is gonna buy ours. We're gonna use the REOs to get the right price, be satisfied with it, not a problem. So now if you have a lot of boarded up houses but they have not hit the market yet, you have gotta be really conscientious of that area right there. So if you say you're on a street and the street has 40 houses, 20 on each side, on that street, five of them are boarded, but they're not on the market. So you know they're gonna be hitting the market sometime you know, in the future, but they're boarded up now, not on the market. 
I probably wouldn't buy a house on that street because because they're not on the market. I don't want to be blindsided by an, 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 a lender who's wanting to dump his property. You know, they're going to go to the market and they got these five houses or two houses. Another lender has another one. Another lender has two more. And they just dump the, the properties on the market and kill my values. But if they're on the market, that's okay. But if they're not on the market and they're boarded up, you have quite a few of them. Stay away. Question number four. How does one make the determination if it's worth it to spend money to upgrade the house? Curb appeal, siding, maybe just fix in the really bad things to get a higher price. You have to really, you have to ask yourself what you like doing. Like there, like I said, there's a time in my life I liked going to Home Depot. Loved it. Got my contractor's license, I passed my test, had all my insurance and bonds, and man, I could hammer nails and hang sheetrock. Don't want to do that anymore. I don't even want people to do it for me because I know that it's about turning dollars. How many times can I turn my dollar? And yes, I can make higher returns if I fix and flip them. But that $20,000 that we talked about earlier, it's going to take me quite a long time to make it. I would rather buy a house, sell it as is, buy another house, sell it as is, because I bet I can do two and a half for every time someone does a rehab. And I know my two and a half are going to make more than their, their one rehab. So again, if that's what you want to do, that's how you decide. It's what... What makes you happy? That's what life's all about. If it makes you happy going to Home Depot and you want to do that, absolutely knock yourself out. If you look at the mathematics and the wealth potential of fixing and flipping as it compares to assigning, wholesaling, and wholetailing, you'll absolutely agree with me that wholetailing is your best opportunity. Question number five. Does Michael always list the house as is, no repairs, no warranty? Always is a big word, so no. I can never say I always do something. I can tell you that's what I'm doing now that's the first line of defense on selling a house is selling it as is you know we get us we get a bpo from an, a real t- real estate agent sorry i'm stuttering that bpo is going to outline the repair requirements that the real estate agent thinks and the cost that they think that associated to those repairs now i'm a broker and i can't ever remember a single class that to get my broker's license i had to take to determine repair costs so I know a lot of agents, they don't know repair costs because they just don't have construction background in their, in their you know, history. I do, so I know repair costs. In fact, we have a form in the coaching program. It's called our ugly, uglier, ugliest worksheet. And boy, it tell you what, you walk through a room, you determine each item that's in that room. There's just several of them. They just multiply in the house over and over again. But you determine, is it ugly, uglier, or ugliest? And based upon what you think it looks like, you can get really close to the repair costs. And it's a form we created about a dozen years ago. Works really well. Yeah, I don't want to do stuff to it. But if I had to, you know, I almost did one. But I ended up making, I think, $49,000 on it. So on, the, on a double close. So I was going to video it, show everybody what, you know, an actual repair process went through. But yeah, I don't, I don't like them. I, I, want to, I just want to put them on the market and sell them as is. And I don't even list my own properties. So, you know, I'm not... I buy houses all across the country, but even the ones in my backyard, I don't list them myself. It's not worth my time and my energy. So think about all these little ways to save money, make money, you know, do what you want to do in life. So if you want to be an assigner, get into the program. I'll show you how to assign. If you want to be a wholesaler, get in the program. I'll show you how to do that. Wholesaler, fix and flip, passive income. I think there's general rules on all of them, but there's very specific rules if you want to start maximizing your, your profit till tomorrow. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.